and we're live. Welcome back, everyone, to the weekly episode of the Electric Podcast. As usual, I'm Frederick, your host, and I'm joined with Seth Wintraub. How are you doing, Seth? Good. Stormy over here. Yeah, it's the, the other way around this week. Yeah, nor'easter. It's pretty much spring over here. Yeah, if a tree comes down like during the podcast, you'll know why. <laughs> and as you can see, if you're watching live on YouTube, I have a little update on my setup here. Hopefully, it's a, it's an upgrade. <laughs> I'm not so sure yet, but uh, we'll see. Um, so this week, uh, we're going to start with actually a, um, a little podcast exclusive since I hadn't had time to write about it on that track yet because I just came back for from uh, Mont Tremblant, which is a chain of mountain here in, uh, in Quebec, where there was a very cool uh, electric vehicle unveiling not not an electric vehicle that we're used to see uh, an electric snowmobile so i just uh i i uh, i drove up there uh yesterday for the unveiling the company is named taiga motors we uh reported on them uh, uh, last um last year during the last winter season because they had a, a product a few of the prototype working with the um a big resort in whistler um and um They've been working on uh, to improve on that prototype and bring something to market. So that was the consumer version that they were unveiling yesterday, and uh, it's a very cool vehicle because if if you're not very familiar with uh, with the world of the snowmobiles, they're extremely polluting, uh, both with emissions but also with with noise, like they're very noisy. But in terms of emission, there's practically no uh, regulation right now for for snowmobiles so with the two stroke engine they're just crazy crazy emission that they're they're emitting and uh tiger said 50 times uh car like an average car which i haven't verified yet but i, I wouldn't be exactly surprised by it um so there, there's really an opportunity here to have an impact even though of course like snowmobile is not a huge market and uh of course you can also use the electric powertrain, the advantage of the electric powertrain to bring into uh, a winter um, power sport. And that's uh, li like we saw back when we uh, we tested the uh, uh, Nikola ATV, uh, UTV back in Utah uh, a few months back. And there's really a lot of opportunity to take advantage of an electric powertrain and have fun with uh, an, an electric power sport. And they did it with uh, with that snowmobile for sure. We're going to have a few videos, uh, hopefully tomorrow, that I'm going to put together. We've been editing right now, but um, I'm gonna have an article on Electric and a, and a, a, a few videos. You, you can see like doing a, a zero to sixty. That thing do zero to six, zero to sixty in, in uh, three seconds. I don't think like we didn't have a V box or anything. We didn't test it exactly, but uh, it was crazy fast. But the condition wasn't weren't right for a, a perfect uh, zero to sixty since uh, the the snow here uh, melted a lot, so it compacted. So you're basically just riding on uh, on ice. So it wasn't ideal, but it was still a ton of fun. And uh, the snowmobile also just looks cool. They managed to pack a 15 kilowatt hour pack in it. So the range is not uh, anything great. Like it's uh, 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 62 miles. Uh, but uh, that's in minus 30 Celsius degrees. So it's really designed to work well in very extreme cold climate. Uh, it will be great for like um, ski resorts. Those uh, those resorts normally have a few uh, snowmobiles uh, for the staff, and uh, you you already have the facility in place to just install charging uh, up and down the mountain. So it's going to be a great opportunity for that, and just for people who would like to 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 drive s snowmobiles because it's it's uh, increase the fun by uh, a factor of two at least because you remove all the noise. Like you can you can hear that snowmobile coming like miles away normally this one you you don't you, it's like it's like when you're driving in um an electric car in the parking lot and you surprise someone because they, they don't they don't hear the, the car coming same thing with us you can do the same thing but with a, a, a full-size snowmobile which is cool of course there's still the noise of a uh, uh, of the chain on the snow and everything but uh i, I think a lot of people are going to be pretty impressed with uh with that vehicle and it's done by a, a team of just 17 people out here in, in Montreal, um, it's sort of a spin-off, a little bit of McGill. Uh, like a, a lot of people from the company um, came from the um, from McGill University in Montreal. They, uh, they even have like a, the software guy is uh, is from Tesla and work on the Model Three, um, and uh, he, he came on board with the with the Tiger team to to work on the 
on the snowmobile because they they're making it. They, they said that they're very inspired by Tesla. First off, for the actual like design philosophy, because they they started from scratch. They don't, they don't they didn't take like a, a snowmobile and just converted it to electric. They uh, built it from scratch in order to uh, maintain a, a low weight, uh, like the lowest weight as possible. Because of course we know that when when you you go electric, normally uh, weight can be an issue because of the uh, the batteries. But uh, you have to be very careful with that with a snowmobile because the snowmobile, of course, its terrain is snow, so you want to be as light as possible in order to to just glide on it um, as much as possible. And they did that. I think like uh, I have to to check the spec sheet yet, but uh, I think it's like something like five hundred pounds, which is which is exactly a, a big uh, difference from a, a regular snowmobile. And uh, like I said, with that's with a, a fifteen kilowatt hour pack in that, which is pretty impressive. And uh, yeah, what, what I was saying about the software is that um, they, they are really um, going with the software update. So just like a Tesla, you're going to be able to update with times and your snowmobile is going to improve. And uh, you're going to even have um, uh, like a, not, not a touch screen, but a, a screen with uh, very similar to the like a Tesla instrument cluster and everything. So it, it's really like a Tesla of snowmobile, if you will. Are um, they doing it? Are they? I mean, a snowmobile is a winter item. Are they doing anything with the battery during the summer? Can you like uh, use it as a battery backup for your home or anything? Uh, that's a good question. That's why you should have been there. You, you could have that question. I didn't think they asked this question because it's a uh, yeah, it's a good idea since uh, you can you, you mean use it like a, in a stationary energy storage and yeah, fifteen. You said fifteen kilowatt hours, right? Yeah, that's, that's a, like power wall. a power wall, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I will tell them for sure. <laughs> Uh, so you need like a vehicle to grid technology, like just a two-way right. bi-directional charger, and uh, yeah, that that makes sense because you you definitely don't see a lot of use from aside from a few months a year, and that, that's a big thing too because snowmobiles um, a big cost is maintenance, like right. uh, as we know EVs very low maintenance. So and you don't want to you want to take advantage of that very little maintenance and get as much as you can from the from the snowmobile and that will be another way to to do it which is having a more use of, of in the battery pack. I'm not a hunter or anything, but I wonder if those would be better for hunters that use snowmobiles to go out and shoot for you know deer or whatever since they're quieter and you can't hear them like ten yeah. miles away. Yeah, hunting is already like pretty difficult in the in the summers. Right. <laughs> so it's not that popular in the winter, but uh, maybe like in Alaska or something when they. Or uh, up northern Quebec when they're hunting for caribou, but um, yeah, the, the, for, like anything, like, you, you're bringing a big machine into the nature, and you want you, you want to experience it as best as possible. And a, a loud, polluting engine is not the best case at all. That's the best case, the fully electric uh, option. And it looks like Tega is going to be first to market with it. And they they like the the price is not exactly uh, crazy either. We're talking about fifteen thousand dollars, which is on the expensive side for a snowmobile, but it's uh, like a, it's a performance of a snowmobile like, for for at that price. That that's uh, pretty reasonable. Uh, so yeah, we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, Can I have, uh, yeah. Go ahead. I saw some uh, preview video of you yeah. on it, and it, uh, you you guys on out there are gonna re really want to take a look at this. It's pretty. Pretty uh, awesome looking uh, snowmobile. Yeah, well, and I I, uh, I shot it next to my Tesla too because like they said, the guys were, were pretty inspired by Tesla. So we got a few shots with the Tesla. Looks very cool, and a few of course a few shots of uh, of it working. And um, yeah, that's gonna be up on Electrek tomorrow probably, most likely. If your if your Macintosh doesn't crash. Yeah, I've been having some difficulty as. A, uh, editing the video so far, but it's gonna work. I'm gonna make it work. Don't worry. But that wasn't the uh, only electric vehicle that was unveiled this week. Well, well unveiled. Like we already seen those cars, like the Jaguar I Pace. I'm talking about right now. We, we've seen the Jaguar a few times, but uh, this week was the global unveiling of the production version. So they are starting production. Now we see the final design, and uh, to be fair, it's pretty close to the the concept, right? Like yeah. uh, you, I don't know if you were, were you as impressed as, uh, as me for uh, for the concept. I honestly, the outside of the I pace looks solid for sure, not like crazy anyway. Um, but I think a lot of people that don't like Tesla interiors um, 
I actually don't mind the Tesla interior, but mm -hmm. people who like the more classic version of an interior will like uh, the Jaguar I-Pace. And a lot of people who say, well, you know, I just dropped $70,000 on a car. I, I want a less Spartan, uh, more full featured interior, you know, more traditional and whatever. Uh, they're yeah, gonna you're, like, gonna, you're gonna get that with the eye pace for sure. Yeah. So the, for me, the interior is kind of the bigger draw. And uh, that's the thing. The interior too is um, it's fairly close to the concept that they unveil. You can check on the electric right now if you go with the eye pace. You're gonna we posted a bunch of pictures. It's pretty close to what they uh, unveiled the concept last year. And uh, it's a big update for Jaguar in general. Like the Jaguar is a very specific. Um, design uh philosophy for the interior of, of their cars and the uh the exterior too with the long bonnet and everything but it, it, it looks it, it doesn't look like usual jaguar i think like they, they went a bit different with electric um for for their first electric car because that's their first electric car they still have the big grill at the front which i thought yeah. was kind of like like uh you know what, what are you doing with that like what, yeah. what's all the air going but it's pretty mesh though, like it's uh it's closely matched. It doesn't look like a, a regular grill either. Right. The, the the mesh design in it, it's not uh almost look like it's closed. Like well, hey, like it depends everybody on the tried video, yeah. everybody tried something different with their with their first electric cars for, for the grill. Like Tesla had the nose comb thing, like uh, and not appreciated by everyone either. So right. uh, we're gonna let that one slide, I think. <laughs> But uh, in terms of specs, so uh, no big surprise for the production specs. Uh, still a little bit of confusion around the uh, actual range, but uh, uh, the, the battery pack is 90 kilowatt hours. So they have confirmed that for a while now. It's a dual motor, all version of dual, dual motor. Um, but uh, what that um, enables in terms of range, they said to, they were talking about 240 miles during the unveiling. Uh, previously, they, uh, they've talked about uh, 250. Uh, but they said the EPA was 220 miles. So that's interesting to me because a 90 kilowatt um, Model X, uh, the range, much bigger car, the range is supposedly about 150 or 255 or something, 256. Uh, so I don't know for sure. Well, so you have one, you should know. <laughs> I know. I, I, when I started up, uh, I, I believe I oh, get. What, what, what do you? So you're talking EPA, or you're talking what? What you get? You're getting for range right oh, now. What I get is way lower, but I'm just yeah. saying EPA is like 260 uh, for the yeah. for the Model X 90 uh, D. So it's strange that a what appears to be a much smaller vehicle with the same size battery gets uh, a shorter EPA range. Although, well, it's not official yet, so maybe yeah. we'll, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But that's. Excuse me. That's what they themselves uh, said was the estimate. So, right, they don't usually oh, underestimate. Yeah, but, yeah. They, they but, want uh, uh, one thing that uh, we did uh, learn, though we uh, really had a pretty good idea, is uh, is the price. So the uh, Jaguar hasn't really officially uh, released the price, uh, as, at least for all markets. But you, you can order the car in the UK right now, and. Um, through the the retailers and so the retailers will see the prices but the all the official prices per markets are, are going to be unveiled uh, next week uh, at the uh, at the car's official debut in in, uh, in geneva because this week the unveiling was like it just a, they were trying a new thing it was just a digital unveiling live uh, on the on the internet and uh, the actual location was their manufacturing uh, manufacturer facility uh, the factory in uh, Austria in the uh, Graz. I who, think. who owns Jaguar these days? I know Ford did for a while. Tata. And then Tata, the Indian, Indian, Indian company. Yeah. All right. Uh, and it's uh, with uh, Land Rover too. Right. But so the prices in the UK uh, starting at 63,000 pounds, which is the equivalent of $87,000 US. But I think. Thing that includes the uh, local taxes. The VAT? Yeah, the VAT taxes. So again, we're not entirely sure. Uh, we, we're going to have a way better idea of this uh, next week. But um, I sure hope that it does include the, the, the taxes because otherwise it's pretty expensive. Like it's starting a, a price higher than the, than the Model X, even though it's a much smaller vehicle. And we've been talking a lot about the Model X, and it's not our fault <laughs> because uh, Jaguar themselves tried to play, 
uh, position the vehicle as a Model X competitor. And uh, why do we know that? Is because during the unveiling event, they uh, they released uh, the they had a little pre-arranged um, drag race between uh, the Jaguar and two different uh, Model Xs. And uh, of course, the Jaguar won. But uh, our main problem with that is the fact that, like we said a few times before, it's not really uh, in the same category. It's the Model X is a much bigger car. I, I mean, I, I would, in comparison to the Model X, it's pretty much like a crossover at this point. Yeah, I mean, the Model X seats seven. It's got an extra row. It's it's pretty. You know, it's. I think it's, it's higher. Got... It's much higher. It's right. much longer. It's Gets much the higher. Tax. Yeah, it's even it's, it's it's much heavier, so it gets the armor tax. Yeah, right. So it's a different class of car. Um, but you know, it, it you know, if zero to sixty is your number one thing, and you you want to spend less than a P one hundred D, then uh, well, you want a smaller car too. You, plenty of people want a smaller car. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, the is that I think so. There's only two. They're calling it an SUV, so there's only two all-electric SUVs. So they, that, that's why they directly went against the Model X. But like I wrote in our article about that, about about the comparison with the Model X, I have a problem with that. Like every new EV that that comes out, of course we are comparing it to uh, other EVs because it's the same point, especially uh, when in regards to the powertrain and it's like that. But when it's trying to market the vehicle to customers. Uh, now they went directly against Tesla. I don't think that's a good strategy. I think when you, you release a new electric vehicle, especially if you, for legacy automakers that have a, um, already a lineup of gas-powered cars, and from an automaker that claims that they're going all electric and they, they want to phase out the uh, internal combustion engine, uh, just like Jaguar is, is claiming to they want to do, then you should be trying to convince gas-powered cars buyers, like the petrol heads and, and, and people like that, to uh, to go electric, instead they're just trying to steal market share from Tesla. To while Tesla was is trying to do is just convert um, petrol heads to electric uh, propulsion, which I, I think it's the thing to do. Yeah. So I mean, what would be a good car to compare this to? Like a BMW X3 or X3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the X3, uh, though maybe it might be just a, a bit smaller. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, and though it's, it's also half the price, <laughs> right. how much did the X3 start? Like an extreme, I think it starts like a uh, forty thousand, maybe uh, 40, forty-two thousand. Forty-two thousand is the MSRP. Yeah, so it, 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 I understand why they went with the Model X because it's very hard to compare it to anything else because because it's all electric and they they haven't managed to have a reasonable price for it. Because if you remove the price, um, it looks like what Tesla wants to do with the Model Y, right? Like uh, a smaller SUV, yeah, cheap, cheaper, but though much cheaper than than it is compared to the Model X right now. Tesla is going like for forty five thousand dollars. And timing wise, uh, it sounds like Tesla is about to talk about the Model Y for the first time, uh, besides giving it a name and some, you know, other small hints. So yeah. People who would be buying uh, this um, iPace may be given some other options. Yeah, it will be good timing from Tesla to just unveil the car right now and uh, take reservation and just trying to steal some uh, some momentum from them, like like they're trying to do with the Model X. But that's like why I was excited about the Jaguar. I, th I thought it was gonna convert some Jaguar fans to electric, and uh, instead they're just trying to stop um, um tesla from eroding on their market right which is which, which is an understandable understandable strategy of course because you, you know some company they, they're profit oriented and they want to make money but um and they also have to do it i think because of the price because if uh if that car was coming in at like fifty thousand dollars or something that'd be a completely different business then they will go with uh for for, for the i uh, the x3 and uh and other cars in the same segment because that's where the market is there's many a, a, a lot more people uh so that that's the other question how many they can can they build uh we don't we don't know for sure they're, they're certainly going for mass production and doesn't look like it's going to be a compliance car but um 
is it a fifty thousand uh, dollar vehicle, pro fifty thousand unit vehicle program, or is it a hundred thousand unit vehicle program? I mean, where, where are they sourcing the batteries? I know they're the the, the uh, packet batteries instead of the uh, cells. Yeah, they have pouch uh, pouch, pouch cells. Right. Uh, that's a good question. I have, uh, if I I'd put my money somewhere, I'd put it on uh, LG. LG, yeah. Uh, huh, that'll be interesting. I mean, you know, LG is having problems getting enough cells and, and packs to GM and uh, Hyundai. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see if uh, I guess I guess if they're selling seventy thousand. Eighty thousand dollar cars. Yeah. Sp speaking about that, uh, that'd be a good little segue into the uh, Bosch news. How do you pronounce? Do you, how do you pronounce that? Bosch. Bosch in the U.S. But... Bosch. Okay. I'm Bosch, sure which is a big uh, tier one supplier for the auto industry, and they've been teasing us about a huge investment into battery cells. And just like we like we just discussed, there's um, a big supply problem right now with the battery cell for the uh, well, at least automotive grade battery cells for the electric vehicles. And uh, Bosch was talking about um, a 20 billion euro investment into uh, achieving a 200 gigawatt hour annual production of battery cell, which would make them, excuse me, right now, the biggest uh, cell supplier for the auto industry. Uh, by that time, they would have achieved the 200 uh, gigawatt hour. Probably wouldn't be, but uh, just the investment alone would have change the industry in a big way like it will have shake up shook up the industry and uh, uh lg panasonic tesla um and the chinese uh, manufacturers they all would have to to take notice and uh probably uh adjust their own investment program into more production but they don't have to because uh Bosch didn't do anything uh, they were teasing that for a few months now and they said they were going to take the a decision about uh, about the investment so it looked like the the investment program was ready and it just need the board's approval to uh, go ahead with it but it's a lot of money and the board said no and uh, this week they even uh, released a, a whole press release about taking that decision and the background behind it and basically what they said is was it was too risky for them they feel like um, they prefer to have an expertise in the battery pack and just an understanding in the in battery cells in order to choose the best battery cells to put into battery packs and sell sell that battery packs to um, companies. So I mean that that's the PR spin is that it was a high risk and I guess it you know that that is a, is a factor. But do you think that their technology just wasn't as good as uh, LG, Samsung, Panasonic, or? Do you think that uh... well, we don't know much about their technology? They, they were doing a two-way strategy with uh, both traditional uh, lithium-ion battery cells, and of course, uh, they were the more more publicized in that um, investment into solid-state batteries. Right, with the, they bought the CO or whatever. Yeah, so uh, CO was uh, like we those things are all closed up. Like we never had a prototype cells to test, so we don't know for sure. But they were claiming like really big things. So they were claiming um, uh, record-breaking uh, energy density, the good cycles. Uh, of course, solid state can have also very fast charging. So the, all great things. But the solid state, plenty of other startups uh, claim the same thing for solid states, and the 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 problem has always been bringing that uh, cell to production at a reasonable price and uh, no one has done that yet bosch was seen probably as a leader in the space so that's uh, that's that was a big news because of that this week because um, yeah, that's kind of disappointing do you think they'll yeah. spin off or sell their the they battery? said they're going to sell uh, they're going to sell the startup like uh, they, they were operating CEO as a as a subsidiary uh -huh. and they're just going to sell it so they don't want anything to do with it and they're going to dissolve their uh, lithium ion uh, subsidiary so that's probably wow. an indication like you said uh, or they behind in the in the technology uh, if they uh, if they are that's definitely an indication if uh, they don't even want to sell the IP from it or uh but well this solve can mean a few things though they can probably just uh take the uh the, per the people working on it and the um the chemist and the uh, electrical engineer and the battery expert and just uh, bring it to a more because uh, they, they said they want to retain retain uh, an expertise in battery cell uh just to um build battery packs around it so you, you're still gonna need uh, those people around yeah we should also note that uh bosch makes like i think probably the most popular uh e-bike powertrain 
Yeah. Um, and you know, like almost all the bikes from like track and, and the big, uh, biking, uh, companies come with a Bosch, uh, bike engine and, and they, they just, that's what they do. They just sell the, 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 uh, electric bike engine and controller and battery, uh, which will be outsourced, um, as a piece for track and track installs that on their bikes and, and. Um, they're quite nice. Uh, they're a little bit loud. Uh, I think another company called bros, another German company that came out of the, the seat motor, uh, space, uh, makes a little bit better of a ride kind of, uh, engine. And there's, you know, uh, Shimano's in the game, Yamaha's in the game. So there's a lot of, uh, stuff in the electric bike space right now. But I think as things stand right now, Bosch is probably the leader, um, so it's interesting to see them make that decision with that as a backdrop, knowing that, that they've got the, 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 at least their own internal uh, uh, divisions as, as po possible customers. So they're turning that away. And also, I, I believe Bosch also has like a, an e-car, like end-to-end -end solution where they, they give you the powertrain and you do what you want with it. Yeah, they're, they're trying to be in pretty much in every significant electric component in a, in a car they're, they're trying to have to, to basically own the power train uh, a few companies are doing that right now they're really on board with electrification but uh th those are, are, are all uh, again we were talking about risk are all safer bet it's it's already um in their portfolio for uh gas powered cars so the battery cells it, it's a lot of people are saying that it's becoming commodity. Yeah, not 100 percent sure about that, but uh, it certainly is. It is right now because of uh, just the way lithium ion just dominates everything, and it's basically just a, a few uh, incremental uh, change in the chemistry that's happening. That's happening pretty much every year. But uh, a lot of people are waiting for the next big thing. So, what's going to be the big breakthrough? Batteries and the new technology is going to replace lithium ion. And uh, solid state, of course, is pretty much the number one contender. Do you, for you think when I remember a few, uh, maybe a year ago or a few months ago, uh, uh, Elon and and I believe um, JV Straubel were talking about, they were like, they're talking about the Gigafactory and they said, uh, you know, lithium ion is the only thing that's going to happen, except maybe there's one thing. Yeah, they did mention one breakthrough, but they didn't explain uh they didn't elaborate on which one it was. It was around the same time that um uh good enough um good enough, the oh, yeah. uh, the guy that invented pretty much wasn't one of the he's credited as being one of the inventor of the lithium ion battery and uh he unveiled his own breakthrough for solid state batteries. So maybe it was in reference to that, but uh, no one uh it didn't go further than that. And there's there's been some breakthroughs in other areas of lithium ion, like where uh, they're much safer. You can like you get the pouches and you can stab them and they don't explode. Yeah, well, no one is seeing really uh, an end to uh, improvement right now for for lithium ion. So it's uh, it, it's make it's making it, it it's uh, raising the bar for the next breakthrough every year because lithium ion just keep getting better and uh, so. If, and cheaper that that's the big thing too so like the, the next big two battery even though it's way better it's uh, maybe it's just gonna be able to make a very cool prototype of uh like an electric plane but uh you don't because you have like great energy density super safe and everything but uh, you can produce it in the well often time why why you can produce it at a reasonable cost because you don't make a big investment into the production of it so that that that's why it was exciting to see a uh, botch coming with um these big numbers. Just, yeah, the big number. So if you put a 20 billion euros investment into um, solid state batteries, you're probably going to be able to make the cheapest solid state batteries on the market. Um, and that, that, that was like the second setback in weeks for uh, for solid states. The, uh, the other thing was Dyson, um, which is also developing a, a few electric cars, better known for vacuums, of course. And fans. But, and fans, yeah, for sure. But... Uh, they also bought. They, they did the, pretty much the same thing as Bosch. They bought a uh, you know, seemingly good um, solid state startup, and were supposed to implement their technology into their products. But now, what they said is that probably the first generation of their electric cars won't have that solid state, so they're gonna resolve to using lithium ion again. And don't forget about Fisker. 
Fisker is the other way around, though. Now you see, you see it's coming in uh, in days. They're, they're studying state technology. You're gonna you're gonna have it in your phone by tomorrow. Right. So, it's, it's right around the corner. Yeah. You would like to believe that, but uh, Fisker has lost the benefit of the doubt for us for a while a while back. A few yeah, times actually. He makes beautiful cars, but oh yeah, he's a great designer. But uh, when you start suck puppeting on the, on people's article about uh, about your products and, and things like that, that's that's where you you lose me. Right. But anyway, but, so, so solid states around, and of course, Toyota has been talking about solid state as well. Oh yeah, Toyota uh, Hyundai said that they have a, a pilot plant right now producing them. So the, the like it, it's probably gonna come. It's just when uh, and Toyota and Hyundai are not like normally the ones that are gonna take the biggest risk and they're already big automakers and everything. So we that's why we thought Bosch maybe, but not this time. No. Nope. Speaking of Hyundai, they also unveiled a, a new electric car this week. Another Did you missed it. Another electric car. Yeah, that's not the first one though because of course they have the Ionic Electric already on, and it has uh. And similarly to the uh, Ionic, which is like a multi uh, powertrain platform, they have like a, an hybrid on it, the plug in hybrid on it, and the all electric version. So the Kana is already uh, calling it the uh, compact SUV, pretty much a crossover. And they already have a, a, a gas powered version on the market. And now they're bringing an all electric version of it. But apparently, the vehicle was designed from the start to be both. Um, electric and gas powered so it's not really like a compliance car or anything it's supposedly better than that and the specs are not bad i mean uh, a 39 kilowatt hour battery pack on it and you uh, decline you're gonna get uh, almost 200 miles uh, on a single charge about 186 that's for the base version they're gonna have two powertrain version to not 39 kilowatt hour uh, i think it's gonna start in the low 30 thousand uh, mark again they haven't released all the uh, the price per market but uh, it's supposedly it's going to be available in, in Europe or in Korea by the end of the year. So we're going to have a much better idea of it. But the production version was unveiled today. You also have uh, 100 and f uh, not 150, uh, 99 kilowatt for the um, 39 kilowatt hour for the battery pack on the burst version with a 99 kilowatt motor. Uh, then the second powertrain version and a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack for around 300 miles of range. Um, yeah, 300 miles of range, so that's probably their, uh, uh, what do they call it, not the NEDC, but the new one, the new world standard, which is supposedly better than NEDC, but... Uh, yeah, Hyundai, Hyundai seems to be doing really well with their efficiency. Like, uh, the Ionic oh. is still the the one to beat um, with, it, with uh, I think it's only like a 28 kilowatt hour battery that goes mm -hmm. like 125 miles. Um, and this, you know, compare this to the, the the Jaguar. This is a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack, going 292 miles. So significantly smaller, like two thirds the size battery, going uh, 50, 60, 70 miles further. Yeah, kind of, kind of crazy. Like, yeah, I, but again, we, it looks crazy. But we'll take all these numbers with a grain and salt because we are working with like. Uh, uh, a British company and a Korean company, and they all have different standards that they use, and they don't necessarily make it like easily accessible, which uh, estimate is based on which standard and everything. So, but uh, what said said though is still is still correct. Uh, Hyundai is a is a masterful right now with their efficiency for the electric powertrain, and uh, probably will show in the in the Kona too, since they said that they learned a lot from uh, from building the Hyundai and uh, apply that to the Kona electric program right now. And uh, like the Ionic, uh, one of the big advantage of the Ionic is the is the price. It's uh it's one of the cheapest relatively long range vehicle that you can uh, you can buy right now. We reported a few weeks back though on one of our um, 9 to 5 uh, colleague uh, Jordan is having some issue with uh with his own we haven't heard the, that much about uh, like right now. It's really just anecdotal evidence because we it's only uh, it's only been with uh, well. He, Joe Jordan did report that the uh, he found other a few other report of similar issue. Right. Yeah. There's people on the the uh, Ionic Facebook Ionic EV Facebook group who have had uh, similar issues with the uh, it's the charging system uh, doesn't seem to engage sometimes. So 
to plug it in and it just doesn't start charging. He hasn't had his car in, in weeks now, uh, a few weeks. You know, I haven't checked up on it, but it, yeah. it had been weeks. Um, and everybody's kind of scratching their head over there because the Ionic is such a small volume. The Ionic EV is such a small volume uh, car, especially in Toronto where he is or anywhere outside of California. That the uh, the dealers that you know they just they don't know about they, it. They scratch their head and they say, "Well, you know, it, it, it works now. You know, whatever they try it." Um, yeah, they so, haven't been able to reply uh, replicate the uh, the issue. Should right. be a popular car though in Ontario because uh, of the fourteen thousand dollar credit yeah. Yeah, on top of already the, the the cheap price. Like it's pretty much a twenty thousand dollar Canadian uh, dollar car. Right. Yes really good price for that yeah car. yeah you get you get a lot of car for for twenty thousand dollars just just for the same reason that the bolt is pretty uh pretty popular and i'm telling you there i get i get a lot of messages for from for people so if you guys are listening right now i do get the, those messages i don't respond to every one of them because just there's, there's just too much a lot of people are worried right now because of the elections in in, in ontario a lot of electric readers um want uh, to still have access to that fourteen thousand dollar once the model three it's um uh, it, it's the market in, in canada and um, look, I don't think Tesla's gonna be able to do much, even if uh, if they want to uh, at this point. Uh, though it's not even sure that uh, well, it's it's not even sure that that the, the conservative party is gonna go through. Though it looks likely at this point, if it goes through, it's not even sure that they're gonna remove it. Though it also looks likely at this point. <laughs> so it's not. It certainly doesn't look good. But that's in June, uh, Ontario election, or in June, I think. I know the one the one in Quebec is in October, so generally it's a few months before. But um, yeah, Tesla did accelerate the uh, introduction of the Model Three in Canada. It's uh, now uh, mid two thousand eighteen, so maybe you're gonna be able to have a few uh, squeeze a few in before they remove it if uh, if uh, the Conservative Party goes through. But uh, yeah, and this what what we uh, reported today is that if even though you can buy it, you can at least go see it. It's gonna be in store at Tesla store in Toronto and in, uh, in Vancouver. They're gonna bring. Um, well, it, it's there right now. Actually, they, they have the uh, Model Three in display. You can sit in it, and um, it's gonna be the first opportunity for a lot of a lot of our reservation holder to see the car in person. But and that was, uh, and that was a factor of the car being <clears throat> at a road show or something. For for the Toronto one, yeah, that was uh, that was a th what Tesla says that you just. Brought the car from the show to the the showroom, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they also brought one to Vancouver. So it's really the, an expansion of uh, the display fleet into Canada. Uh, the Montreal store didn't get one, unfortunately, but uh, we, we we already got to see some in Montreal since they, they did a lot of testing there. So they were two prototypes a few months ago, and uh, then one of the prototypes has been seen a few other places in Quebec to uh, a few of the supercharger. There's one in Bay St. Paul right now, a supercharger in Bay St. Paul, which is pretty far out for Tesla's network. And uh, it was spotted all the way there. So it looks like Tesla's done a lot of uh, winter uh, driving testing in, uh, with the Model 3 uh, in, uh, in Canada and specifically in Quebec over the past few months. Speaking of uh, the Model 3, also we learned this week what's the um, something special that uh, first day reservation holder uh, get uh, like the gift that Tesla is giving to the first first day reservation holder for waiting in line. It's a matchbox car. <laughs> yeah, die cast officially. It's a it's a die cast, but it's not as cool as the uh, the die cast that you can buy online. You can you can uh, I don't think you can buy a Model Three online, but you can buy a Model S and X, and uh, you know the you can operate them like you can open the doors and then the interior is done too. And uh, we we've seen a few pictures of the Model Three one. It doesn't look like you can, the insides are done. It's just a diecast of the outside, but still a cool gift. A lot of people is going to be disappointed though if they were expecting like free supercharger and stuff like that. Though that that pretty much went out the window uh, once uh, Tesla started deliveries and uh, every every uh, model three were, was on the um, on the paid program for the supercharger. Other things were like maybe uh, a color. So we've seen a few sing signature uh, red model three prototypes in the past. So people thought maybe. Uh, Maybe a, a special color to distinguish your car from, because that was something that he mentioned actually. You know, when he was talking about something special, he said something about you, you see the car and you know that's uh, that's a, someone that waited in line to get it before it was even unveiled. But uh, no, that's not it. Unless there's something else, because he did say and a few other things 
but there was also the um the card do i have it here no don't have it. the um maybe the, you'll, you'll get like a little hula dancer to put on your dashboard Wait, wait, wait. A little hula dancer? A hula dancer to put on your dashboard. Oh, hula dancer, like the Hawaiian dancer thing. Yeah, yeah. It's quite popular. <laughs> um, Model 3, uh, first Model 3. Yeah, we also had the first Model 3 dual motor all-wheel drive was spotted in the wild. So a few weeks back, we reported on Tesla registering a new uh, VIN numbers that were including the uh, the Model 3. So in a few weeks, they were turning around time between uh, registering the, the new uh, VIN with the dual motor and uh, producing them in a few weeks because now they they've been seen in the wild. So those are still test vehicles, though, presumably um, testing the production process of the dual motor. But um, Tesla did say that they want they're going to release it in mid 2018. So if pretty much any day now, they could uh, they could be opening the design studio for dual motor, which could be also as we were speaking about Canada, we, we, we could match the timing of bringing the car in Canada. I think. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Canada is known to have some uh, all-wheel drive uh, necessity, so maybe that goes hand in hand. Yeah. Um, Speaking <clears> of <throat> that, though, I was uh, <clears throat> earlier today I was in Montreal. I, I said, and uh, I was very impressed with just the rear-wheel drive of the Model S. Uh, I was on a on a road that was just basically heist. Like if just if I, I was walking on it, I was I was basically skating on it, and I, I had to slide down, and it was it was a hill, not a big hill, but maybe like a a five percent grade or something, and I was just driving up and down like it was nothing. I was really impressed. I yeah, because I, I never owned a, a real drive car before the, the Model S, and uh, I wasn't too worried because, of course, I've been reporting on it for for years now, and I, I had a pretty good idea that, of the performance. But uh, I, I still get impressed today, hmm. most a year after getting the car, so it's it's pretty good. Yeah, that's been my uh, my issue is like uh, with my Model Three is I'm I'm not sure if I need to get the all wheel drive or if I can just get by with rear wheel drive. Well, you you still have your Model X for for all along, so I, we have that, but uh, it's only on a three year lease, so yeah. in two years it's gonna be gone. Yeah, but, but guess, even I if you get your Model Three right now, uh, rear wheel drive, like in three years you're gonna want you're gonna want something else. You're gonna right. want the uh, the Roadster. You're gonna have the Roadster now, and that's Model, gonna be all wheel drive. Model Y, Model Y, Model Y too. Yeah. I don't think I'm. I'm honestly, I'm just not gonna be. I'm not a roadster person. Like just the insurance yeah. alone on that has to be insane. <laughs> no, we need to get all, all each yes. each one and, and start a, a race series. Of, yes, that, this is our weekly uh, reminder to use our uh, <laughs> uh, codes when buying your Tesla, so yeah. that we can all three of us have uh, roadsters to. Uh, that, that's an idea, though. Like, uh, uh, like there's a. Uh, the electric GD with the P100D, the Model S P100D. If we each get one, we could start our own GD with uh, roadsters, like uh, uh, I'd, a I'd do that. with roadsters. Yeah, we could just uh, hire drivers because <laughs> you don't want to do it. <laughs> you know, like I'm fine going. You know, 250 is a little bit scary to me. Like, what? Uh, what if the uh, whole uh, completely autonomous and you do a race series? Oh, then I don't even need drivers. Car. I don't need to be in the car then. At that point, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're not in the car. We're all we just, just drinking beers on the on the side and just having our own cars with a our own number on it and having to race them and see. Well, which that's kind of like those marble races because like, <laughs> it has nothing to do with skill or anything. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, they, they they wanted to do that uh, with um, uh, the Formula E. Yeah, before the Formula E, they had the um, electric uh, autonomous car. They wanted the robot robot race that they wanted to race. Yeah, they had the DARPA had that. That's actually what started a lot of the uh, the autonomy companies here. Yeah, but uh, they turned that into like an official championship that was supposed to run between uh, before each uh, Formula E races. But uh, they did a few like test run before uh, a few shows last uh, few few races last uh, last year. But they, uh, it was supposed to start, but they, uh, I don't think they they've started yet. It's Mexico next week, I think, and. Uh, I don't. I don't think we're going to see that in Mexico. Yeah. So, so back to the Model Three dual motor. Um, we talked about this a little bit before, but for the most part, it's going to be the same. Um, I think we've gotten reports that um, there's already a chamber uh, where the the new motor, you know, the the front motor will go. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not expecting there to be a huge change in the front size. Um, or not at all. Actually, probably not at all. And then um, 
you know, maybe the weight won't really go up that much because, you know, it's, it's just the motor that's using the same battery and, you know, it's the motor will be quite, you know, hundred pounds or something and wiring and stuff. But, uh, most of the weight, uh, in electric car is the battery. Yeah. This is going to have to like fine tune the, uh, normally they try to optimize, uh, um, the, the front motor and the rear motor and different speeds so that, uh, you can increase the efficiency. Uh, of the overall car like having a front motor that's more optimized for a highway driving for example so the you, you switch the torque between each one in order to uh, get greater range so that's probably what they're doing right now or they've probably already done maybe and now they're just testing uh, the um, manufacturing process and all it ends up in the in the car but uh like we said a few weeks back so, um, it looks like the, it looked like the um non-owners invite to configure were coming soon now it looks like the uh, invite to configure an all-wheel drive Model Three is coming soon. I think. Yeah, that seems like the next thing. Yeah, maybe in a in a few podcasts we are gonna be able to report that. Yeah, it'd be nice to get a test drive of one of those. I wonder. I wonder if that's gonna be on the table. Yeah, we we'll have to call our friends at Tesla to see if we can make that happen. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to go down to California relatively soon, right? Uh, there's a few things to line up. We we have to raise the uh, Tesla Semi. Right. That's coming. We're gonna have to raise that. Um, also, have to go down for the boring, boring uh, company uh, drilling. But that, that, I think that's gonna be more like uh, this summer, like in July or something like that. There's also the Model Y announcement. Model Y unveiling, which is uh, April. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we don't know that. We don't know anything. We don't know nothing. Um, yeah, that's pretty. weren't that many uh, Model Three news this week. Uh, 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 there was another batch of invite that, that that went out. I think yesterday or the, the day before, though. Um, normally it's like on the Wednesday, so the day before. Big batch came out, so check your uh, your Tesla account as usual uh, because uh, emails are really not real reliable right now. I haven't been for a while. Yeah. Moving on, Harley Davidson. We were speaking about snowmobiles making a lot of noises that are bothering us. Harley Davidson are pretty much known for the war of a, of a, their motors. But now they're going electric. We reported a few weeks back that they confirmed that 2019 is going to be the year they launched their first electric vehicle after unveiling the Live Warrior concept five years ago. Yeah, man, that was a long time ago. Long time of just sitting on that concept and not doing much, but yeah, they were, now they are jump starting their electric vehicle program by investing into Alta Motors. Kickstarting. Kickstarting. What did I say? You said jump starting, which jump is starting. Like more, more like batteries, <laughs> which, is, which is okay. But kickstarting is more of a, a motorcycle metaphor. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, you, you might remember Alta Motors because we reported on them a few a few times before. Originally, we reported on them because. Um, Martin Heberhard and Mark Tarpening. Why does that name sound familiar? That name sounds familiar, except because they are one of the two original co-founders of Tesla Motors. Hmm. And of course, with a nasty breakup in 2008, 2009, that led to both of them leaving the company. And well, uh, So I don't know the history that well. I know Martin, he was the CEO. He the, that, that was nasty, and he's the one who sued. But was the Mark Tarpening... The same thing, or did, were, were they kind of a team? Wasn't as bad, I think, for 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 Mark. They were a team, the different league, since it, like they, again they went on, they they went together into uh, Alta Motors. Well, they did they just invest in around Alta Motors. I don't think they involved in the day to day or anything like that. By the way, I'm not trying to overstate their um, uh, contribution to the company, but uh, yeah, I think Mark uh, Mark Tappening left in uh, 2011. I think uh, I might be mistaken though. But uh, yeah, if he left like two years after um, after Martin, uh, it's not that that big of, a, of an issue. And of course, Martin's big deal is because he was demoted from the CEO to uh, uh, was he chief technology officer for a while? Like I, I think he was demoted to just a more uh, technical role for a while, uh, but uh, decided to leave uh, after that. Or and then they was, yeah, pretty much pushed out. And then it was a big thing, like you said, as soon as he started a blog, he started a blog about Elon Musk and about how uh, uh, he mistreated him uh, in the company. Well, of course, Elon just, he was the one, he was the money um, money guy, he invested a lot of money in it, and he, uh, he, he, was, seeing the, uh, he was seeing it coming that he was going to lose everything in Tesla uh, because of uh, the roster program was just not happening. 
uh, delays after delays after delays. So he wanted a CEO that could fix it. And uh, after two, two or three more CEOs in a in a year, <laughs> he just said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do it." <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, we should give him a little bit more credit. He was doing a little bit of the uh, the direction, the you know, strategy uh, of the company. Um, yeah, yeah, it wasn't just the money guy. It was the right. money guy. So that that was, I think, a big factor for him because he didn't want to just lose all the uh, assets that he had in the company. Right. But, he, sa he saved Tesla with his with his uh, money uh, yeah. on a number of occasions, probably. But for sure, yeah, he was already a product architect and, and right. doing a lot of insight into uh, the uh, Roadster program. But now coming back to Alto Motors, they've been doing... Um, they developed a, an electric powertrain for uh, electric motorcycles. They haven't been as known as uh, zero motorcycles, maybe because mainly off-road vehicles. But they won a few races and everything, so they they they've trying to they picked up a lot of momentum and they've been recognized for the lightweight um, power, electric powertrain. So they they use a small battery pack, just five kilowatt hour or so, and um, they uh, they keep the the weight of their vehicle fairly light. And uh, now hardly invested in an undisclosed amount into the company, but they did say that uh, the investment was linked to collaboration into developing their their own vehicle, which is expected to come out as soon as next year. So uh, not sure how much contribution they can do in a, in a just a few months in order to um, to bring a, a vehicle to market. But uh, there's, there's going to be a lot to do because I don't think like uh, I, I think I'll get sell. Uh, fewer than 100 miles of range or something like that so uh, they have to develop something else for the early i think i don't think that's going to be uh, acceptable for people used to the r davidson's yeah it, it's kind of confusing like what what is this uh duo going to come up with i think maybe harley you know wants to use their battery management systems and maybe their uh their technology but their designs, I think Harley will probably stick to their in-house. Their their live wire thing looked pretty cool. Yeah, they could just release the live wire <laughs> with a new power train. Of course, the live wire is going to go like 60 miles or something. But uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the look of it, I don't think anyone would complain about it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to me, though. Like, they had a concept or they had a working prototype. Like a fleet five, of working prototype. I think they had like 50 of them. Five years ago. Yeah. Like there's companies that are two years old that are producing, you know, that more than it's just it's frustrating. Yeah, and, and, and Harley's and doing I, I, pretty I saw poorly some, right now. Some articles about it uh, when they confirmed the uh, that they were working on one uh, last week or the week before, and some 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 journalists were were saying like Harley Davidson's gonna bring uh, electric vehicles to the electric motorcycles to the masses. They're gonna they're gonna make uh, electric vehicle electric motorcycles mainstreams and, and things like that. Like, come on, like Harley Davidson is a great motorcycle company, but you cannot credit them for making electric bikes uh, mainstream or something. No, like they're that. going they're going into electric motorcycles, kicking and screaming. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, they're late to market, and they're not uh, willing. To participant in, the, in right. that they're, transition. They're doing it because they're going to get their backsides handed to them if they don't do it. Yeah, and They're already kind of in, in a little bit of trouble, I think. I, you know, I don't know what Zero is, is selling, and I don't know, but I know that uh, the cops like mm -hmm. Zeros because they're quiet mm -hmm. and they can sneak up on people. So, I, And I know Harley sells a lot of bikes to cops. So that alone is probably worrying Harley Davidson. Yeah, and, and everything's going electric anyway, so you have to deal with it at some point. I think we should address, like, I'm looking at the comments right now, and it seems like everybody is just talking about the same thing, which is the, uh, where is the Model 3 production ramp up right now? And uh, the truth of the matter is that we don't know. Like, a lot of people put a lot of money into the uh, Bloomberg thing, like, if, but we, we told you guys a few weeks back that wasn't, that wasn't a good idea. We knew that uh, they were going to revise that, and sure enough, they did this week and brought the weekly rate down uh, to well below uh, 1,000 units. And it just, just, it just doesn't work well right now looking at the VINs. Uh, it, it, it works like if you just take out a few thousand units at the minimum, and even then you're not going to uh, get an, an exact, nothing close to an exact uh, approximation of, um, of the number of Model 3 produced to date. Uh, this week, they uh, registered a new, another thousand unit with uh, Nechta, and uh, that's uh, bring the total to over twelve thousand. But uh, if they produced 
8,000. I'd be very surprised at this point. Pleasantly yeah. Surprise. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it, it is nice that uh, they registered over 1,000 new ones, uh, and the high, I think, is twelve thousand mid-12,000s. Uh, yeah, but, but they haven't registered any in, like, two weeks before that, though. Right. So, like, another 1,000 in two weeks, that doesn't mean 500 a week, maybe. We don't know. Like, uh, before that, they did a they, they, they jump of 3,000 a week or something like that, so... It's really difficult to tell right now. They're right. supposed to be at 2,500 by the end of the month. Uh, at least that was the last update. And the thing is, the people we know most about it are, are, are Tesla right now. And uh, but even them, they don't. I don't think they know exactly. Or well, they know how many are they producing. Like yesterday, how many they produced yesterday? How many they kind of produce today? Uh, but they don't know that. when they're going to hit their numbers. Yeah, they just don't know. They they all sending estimates. So that's why they they always like uh, the. They use they're using their words carefully when they uh, they release estimate and uh yeah to read between the lines sometimes and um uh, yeah people they think they're desperate yeah I mean the the good news for Tesla is that there's nothing comparable to the Model Three at the price I mean you know yeah and I know yeah. some people are like well I'll just go get a Chevy Bolt and you know there there are some doesn't seem to be the case <laughs> like I reported yesterday <laughs> Chevy Chevy released a number again for February right. and I, every time I say that people come down on me like saying that I'm I'm, I'm being shitty to the vault and everything it's not the point I know that uh, like I don't expect them to reach in February the same number that they did in December with uh, all the tax credit uh, boost and everything like that but still you you expect them to be at the at similar level as that they were like mid years of last year when they were still in the production ramp up but no, they're down now to fourteen thousand units from highs of uh, again three thousand in December, but uh, like more reasonable highs of over two thousand units. Yeah, why do you think they were down so hard? I know the the tax is a factor, but what about uh, the winter? Is that a factor? Is... Uh, the fa winter is a factor, of course. You you sell more fewer cars in, in winter, but uh, I I would imagine that it's less of an impact for a vehicle like that. It's supposedly in high demand. Uh, at least they, they, they're trying to lead us to believe that. And um, especially because of the Model 3, and like right now, it doesn't matter for the Model 3 that it's winter. Like, <laughs> if Tesla produces it, people will buy it. That, that, yeah. That's it. And uh, Tesla is not producing it at $35,000. So I would imagine that a lot of people will just uh, get tired of it and, and go with uh, the $37,000. Uh, uh, 37, how much is the? Uh, Thirty-seven hundred. All right, that's the base price. The base price is thirty-seven thousand four hundred ninety-five. So it goes under thirty thousand after the seventy-five hundred dollars. Yes, yeah. and you you're gonna get that uh, seventy-five hundred uh, tax credit too. Uh, while for the Model Three, uh, if you're looking to have the base battery pack, you still have a chance to get it. I think, but uh, I think you better if you are budgeting your 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 purchase. I think you better budget for the getting. 3500 uh, tax credit instead of a uh, 7500. Yeah, it does it does seem like that 7500 is going to run out pretty soon for Tesla. I if I had to guess I would say Tesla hits that very early July. That would make sense if they were trying to, but uh I think um if if it's July they have to do like a big uh they they, they have to change their their logistic and start shipping in Canada and start start shipping the Model 3 I'm talking about in Canada and basically stop Model because we, we, we're always talking about the Model S and X that with, with the news last week that Tesla was uh, dealing of like five months uh, delivery um, timeline for a new order of Model S and X in the US but uh, like I said at that, that time uh, Model S and X are just part of the equation right now Model 3 is a uh, thousand of units a uh, thousand of units a month at least like again, we don't know the exact production rate, but it's certainly in the thousands a month, and it, it should be in the tens of thousands a month uh, at some point in the first half of the year. So at that point, unless they are shipping everything to uh, Canada instead of the U.S., uh, I don't see them uh, finding a way to not hit the two hundred thousand threshold in Q2. But it's not impossible. Maybe they just funnel everything to Canada and uh, I get my car sooner than you. Right. Because that would happen if we're both looking to get an all-wheel drive, for example, and uh, you you order it, uh, you uh, you can only order it like in uh, 
let's say in May or something like that, you can start ordering it. And Tesla decided, no, we're not going to ship it to the US because uh, if we do, uh, we lose a month of a full full tax credit and then uh, I get the car and you, you don't. Right. So that, that'd be weird. So for you Model 3 owners out there, here's something that's annoying and kind of sad. You know how like it, it seems like it's going to be so awesome when you get the car? It is really awesome when you get the new Tesla. But after a while, it just becomes your car again. And yeah, I don't know if I can't speak for Fred, but like. Yeah, well, you've been an owner for all long, Seth. You've been like a Tesla owner for like five years. Been an owner for less than a year. And I'm, I still get excited when I get in the car. Okay. So. I, I do too a little bit. And I, like, honestly, I, I went from Model S to Model X and it's not quite as exciting in the Model X because it's more of a you know truck or something. But um, I'm just worried, like I want that Model 3 experience to be the best because I know it's going to be fleeting and I'm going to be like, ah, you know, I'm just like driving around in my mo Model 3 now. Yeah. At some point. I, I think that might apply more to you than that. Uh, I, I think if, if you're a first time Tesla owner, You've been waiting for the Model Three for at least two years, if uh, like if you just count from the time that you place a reservation. But a lot of them have been waiting for it like for five, six years, and just sure. even even before it was called the Model Three and it was still called the Model E, it was just called the what, what was it, the White Star or the Blue Star or uh, before Something that like the the cool name. Yeah. So uh, there there's a lot of them uh, out there. Uh, right. I, I know I was one of them until right. I had enough money to buy the Model S. So it's it's not. It's uh, I think it's gonna be pretty exciting for a lot of people. No, I, I'm not saying it won't be exciting. It's just after a couple of months, maybe a couple of years. Oh yeah. Then it's just your ride to work. <laughs> or maybe it's gonna ride itself to work. Right. And you're gonna be, right. Well, that'll be, be sleeping, nice. and you're gonna be reading, and you're gonna be watching a movie or something. That's uh, Meg Driver sells Blue Stars. Mag MacGyver. Yeah, I think that's right. White Star, I think, was a mole S. Right. You you're right. So on that, let's uh, let's end the, the show for this week. And uh, thanks a lot for listening. As usual, a special thanks to our Patreons supporters that uh, we're two hundred of them. We've been stuck to uh, just a low two hundred for a while, guys. Like, please help us out. We uh, we need it. I'm just kidding. Do it if you can. If not, you're still cool with us. The podcast is still free. And uh, maybe we ne even have uh, we'll have uh, sponsors maybe in the, in the show, but only sponsors. That I think give you guys a benefit too. Like it's something that uh, I think you, due to the fact that you like electric, you're gonna, you're gonna like the sponsors too, and uh, maybe it, it gives you um, uh, it's a, it's a benefit instead of just giving us your time uh, listening to our our spills. But um, yeah, thanks again. See you next week, same time. Take it easy.